Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this time with part four of my series on the Tubal Crane. Be sure and go back and watch the first three if you have not already seen them. I know some of you have not because you are posing questions that were answered in earlier uh, parts of it, so be that as it may. And in this one, in the final episode, this is the final episode, I will be adapting the tubal crane onto the closing lathe to lift my heavy three-jaw and four-jaw chuck. So let's get started. Again, this will be a long video and uh, pictures at the end, so be sure and watch that. Be sure and watch these other parts. There are actually four parts, even though it says two right here. And they begin with episode number 727, and they are in sequence. I received this picture from Anders Granholm, and he's in Sweden. And look at the great cherry picker that he built for his machine. And it's using a winch with a strap and I did consider various types of ratchet straps to start with I didn't mention that I don't believe you know a funny thing happened in the last episode I took the time didn't take much time to uh, go onto my computer and print out a couple of uh, labels it's just on paper and it's held on with scotch tape and I went ahead and filmed that episode 3 and Later that day, when the male beast came, lo and behold, look at what he brought. And this is from Dave Potts in New Jersey. I was not expecting it. And look at how he had it packed between two layers of fiberboard. And even with the post office's best effort, they were not able to bend it or destroy it along with directions on how to apply them here we have two sheets of transfers these are like decal stickers and I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of these on here in just a minute off camera I really like this one best but I believe it's a little bit too high for the width of my rectangular tubing but how awesome is that there's enough here to do both booms on both sides so isn't that awesome thank you David so off with the old if it doesn't take the paint off and on with the new okay the application is finished what do you think by the way most people like this adjustable boom and that's what I'll be using in this video. It does add a little bit over a pound to the weight of this. Remember, I was trying to keep it light. And here's the other boom. I really like that. Boy, this really stands out, doesn't it? Thanks again, Dave. Okay, what's this video really all about? It's about removing this 42, no, 48 pound chuck. It's a finger pincher. It's just hard for me to handle. What I have done in the past is I made this cradle or saddle years ago and that fits right under there. That allows me to actually slide it off of the spindle. Remember this is a taper key, sometimes called a long taper spindle on there. It is not a threaded one. Some of you are thinking this is a threaded spindle. So in order to use the crane I really need to loosen the chuck as I just said and get it on the saddle and then it can easily be lifted and it's all about alignment of the chuck with the spindle. I might have shown this in the last video it's just a device that allows me to lift. And I've got several holes here but I already found the center of gravity and by chance, I got that right the first time, believe it or not. So there's my lifting eye. Some people don't like this. They say that's going to separate. Believe me, that is not going to open up with 50 pounds on it. Just no way. Did you ever try to open one of these? It's a 3 8 by the way. And so that it's going to work just fine. I had a whole box of the professionally made 
forged lifting eyes. I have no idea what happened to them. I think I sold them at my meet and greet, to be honest with you. You know what? I'm going to show you real quickly how I remove the chalk from the spindle on this clausing lathe. Oh, that was loud, wasn't it? I guess I need this one more time. Okay, at this point I am no longer on the spindle, but how am I going to lift it? I, and I can do this, but I think within a couple of years my back is going to find this to be a killer because I have to lean over a little bit in order to lift it. You know what? I spent quite a bit of time pondering the position of the tubal crane. I even thought about mounting it up here on the headstock, and that's not going to work at all. And this belt guard back here is actually fiberglass. Then I thought about mounting it on here, much the way some of the other people on YouTube do it. But I don't believe that this compound and this carriage and this cross slide is up to that kind of weight. But that would be a nice place to have it, simply because I would be able to move it back and forth with the carriage and in and out with the cross slide. So that would be ideal, but this crane really is way too big for that and too heavy. And with the hangover of a 50 pound chuck, you can see that it would put a great strain on this compound. So I don't want to do that. I also considered mounting this some way onto the bed here. I'd have to make some other parts and drill, drill and tap some holes. I thought about mounting it right here. But remember that I know that I will not use this if it is an effort to mount it or install it. It needs to be something that I can use instantly. I think you found that in your shop too. If it's inconvenient, you won't use it. Let's be realistic now. And I considered mounting it here on the tailstock, but I would also have to drill some holes, and it would do that to the tailstock, which is not good. And if I clamped it, I would lose some mobility. So all of those are out, as far as I'm concerned. You might have a better idea. So here's what I finally came up with. A post mounted behind the machine. I feel like Art Fern when I use my pointer. So here's how it's going to go. Pretty snazzy, huh? And now looking at it from the backside, this is an entirely new assembly with a much longer post than the one that I use over on the bridge port. I know what you're thinking, will this table be sufficiently heavy and sturdy to support the tubal crane? Well, let's put it this way. This is my hardened speed lathe, which weighs about 300 pounds, and this is an extremely heavy table with a one and three quarter inch thick maple top, very heavy steel legs that I welded up many years ago with a lot of my heavy accessories on the bottom. And I have four bolts. Matter of fact, that's overkill and gussets here. It's a, that's overkill by far and it is not going to move, I guarantee it. Also, I have the latitude here of moving the table, which is no easy job, a little bit one way or the other to help me line up the boom with the lifting hook. You know, these little jack handles are sure pathetic, and many people said it's way too short. Actually, it's not. You, there's plenty of leverage. This is a two-ton jack, and I'm lifting 50 pounds, so let's get real. But where's the other half? I immediately lost it. Why do they make it in two halves? Not just to annoy you, although it certainly does that, but they want it to go uh, take, come apart so it can put, be put in a little cardboard box. Or in this case, this was in a little plastic case. Probably some poor fool got it for Father's Day and hated it, and that's why it was at a garage sale for three bucks. 
Now looking back at this side, my adjustable boom is too good to be true because I'm not quite centered over the lifting eye so I can very easily back this up. I don't know if it'll have to be one inch or two inches. That's about right. Okay, let's see if this blame thing works. I had to take a couple links out. I was out of travel here on my jack. So let's give this a try. Okay, now I got the thing hanging in the air. What do I do with it? If a fellow was just going to service the chuck, clean it or reverse the jaws or something like that, I could just swing it over here, set it on a board and work right here on the lathe bed. There were times when I stored my chucks on the end, the far right hand end of the bed. So a possibility there is to swing this out of the way, get the tailstock out of the way, use my saddle here, lower it as such, and then slide it down to the end. Now I'm not real satisfied with that. That is setting a chuck in this position. It could get knocked off. Well, you know it will get locked off, knocked off sooner or later, won't it? So that's not really a good option, but it's a possibility. You know what I'm noticing more and more in the comments that some people aren't even really listening to me. They're looking to see if the pipe back here is flexing or if a link is going to open up. In other words, they're looking for loopholes. So we got a bunch of WC fields out there watching. But you know what? The reality is I use this chuck on the closing lathe 90% of the time. I very seldom put the forge off on. So storing the chucks isn't a big deal to me. But another possibility is, of course, to put it onto my vice cart or another storage device such as this. And do I have the travel that I need? On the jack I mean? Yes, I still got about one inch. Now it could very easily be taken off the hook. Come down a little further. And the chuck is actually pretty easy to handle. and roll around and so on, slide around. And I know that some of you guys with, you know, 100 pound checks, including Keith Rucker, use a board or a ramp to roll the chuck off of the lathe and onto a bench or a storage area. And that's very viable too, if you're strong enough to control the weight and it doesn't get away from you. Okay, let's put the chuck back on. I know this is flexing like crazy, but it's not going anywhere, believe me. By the way, there's my four jaw chuck and it weighs 40 pounds. What I'm going to show you now is actually a little bit unrelated to the crane, but it's all about putting the chuck back on this taper key spindle. And I've always had trouble with this. If the chuck is not positioned 101% in alignment, or should I say uh, the end of the thread here in alignment with this threaded collar, I absolutely cannot get the thread to start. So suspending it from the crane at whatever angle it would end up at just isn't, to me, a possibility. 
So here's the way I have always done it. I'm not really sure what this is off of. Some kind of chuck. But I've had it since the dawn of time. This is a number three more staper and this is about inch and a quarter. This is hardened by the way. But what I like to do is put this into my tail stock and clamp this into the three jaw chuck and then it assures that the chuck is truly well so I should, should I say parallel to the uh, axis of the machine and it works great for aligning it so I can get this doggone collar started And the chuck is on. That little trick really works good for me. I don't know if any of you other people out there have a problem or if there is some damage to the threaded collar here. Well that concludes this four-part series on the Tubal Crane. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. Clean up! Clean up boys! It's time to go to lunch!